Ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted to have with us with this evening Aaron Brockett. Aaron, thank you very much for being here. So first off, I want to say congratulations to Jake and Madison on this wonderful day. It's been a great thing watching your relationship grow. Even though I'm not around both of you at the same time, I've had a lot of stories about Jake from Madison. Um, I want to explain how Madison and I became friends, some of our best memories, and how I found out about Jake. So Madison and I met when I was eight years old and she was nine. Um, we were both homeschooled together, but she just moved from Arkansas, and she didn't know anybody in the homeschool Girl Scout group that we were a part of. And she and I, we, um, we were in line getting our badges that we won that day. And she was super shy. She was with her mom. And I, I was too enthusiastic at that age. And I introduced myself and asked her if she wanted to go with my friends and I to the piano in, in the church that we had our groups at. And she was like, no, 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 no. And her mom was like, yes, you need to go with them. Like, it's fine. And so we've been best friends ever since that day. Um, when we were kids, all of us uh, girls that hung out, all of us girls that hung out together, um, we always pictured Madison, uh, Marianne, some small town country boy, and that's who she ended up with, <laughs> one just as such. And um, I always thought that she would end up with a guy that was more outgoing than him. Sorry, Jake, but she's very much more outgoing than you are, which is surprising. Um, she came out of her shell more once she was friends with me and my friends. We created a monster, really. <laughs> um, the one, the way that I found out about Jake is not the way that anybody would think since we are best friends. Um, the summer before our senior year, we kind of lost contact. Like, we just didn't keep up because she was busy with her job and I was still trying to get my life together. <laughs> and she, um, I get on Facebook like it was like the first month or so of my senior year, and I get on Facebook and I see that her relationship status changed from single to taken, and I was like, who the heck is this guy? So I texted her and like yelled at her, and I was like, why didn't I know about this? And there he was in the picture. She told me the whole story then. She just never wanted to text it to me, and I was like, well, better than finding him on Facebook. But. Um, one of the things that Madison told me when we were freshmen in high school is that she would probably end up married and having a kid before I would even be in a serious relationship, which, you know, she was joking at the time, but it ended up being true. <laughs> so I would just like to make a toast to the happily married couple. Madison, Jake, I hope you have a lifetime of happiness. Thank you. Erin, thank you. That was a wonderful speech. We appreciate that sentiments for Jake and Madison. Our next speaker is Jack Stigmeyer. Jack is uh, a student here at SEMO. We're delighted to have him speak with us tonight. Please join me in welcoming to the podium, Jack Stigmeyer. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, we're so excited to be here today to celebrate the accomplishment of my older sister, Grace, graduating college. There are so many reasons why this is so special. First off, she had a lot of work to do to get to where she is today. She had to put in a lot of hours working through countless textbooks and piles of material. This perseverance is something to be admired. And lastly, her dedication to learning has compelled her to pursue her masters here at SLU. This, has been, this is an incredible moment for me as her brother because it's something I can celebrate with her. I'm overjoyed for her today, and I can only imagine how she feels. Finals, from long finals weeks to summers that went by too fast, and school years that came and went in a flash. She's finally here today, and I couldn't be more proud of her. I look forward to seeing what she can do in graduate school, and starting this next chapter of her life. Thank you. Jack, I think we feel your pride as, as you shared that with us. Very nice speech. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our final speaker tonight is Amanda Olson. Amanda is here uh, in, in full regalia and makeup. We're delighted to have her share that with us. And please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Amanda Olson. We're gathered here today 
say farewell to my grandpa. Grandpa, in words, I can't tell you how much I miss you or how your absence is felt by the whole in my heart. I can't tell you how many times I called and you never picked up and I realized that you're gone. And this creates an ache for your baritone voice when you give me wisdom, tell me stories, or how my favorite mem memories revolve around you. You always told me to value the human life. I never understood what you meant, and I don't think I'll ever understand. But what always amazed me was how you showed your appreciation for others. When you met new people and treated them like old friends. I missed that loud laugh of yours as you joked and told gossip to them. You made me realize that I want to be like that too. I miss your stories, and looking back, I know you exaggerated most of it for my own benefit. I adored when you told me of medic vehicles in Vietnam and how you had to amputate a guy's arm. And I realized then, when you told me the new stories or spiced up an old one so you could keep me listening, I hope you knew that I would have listened even if it was <coughs> gibberish. Most of my memories revolve around you. How every Saturday morning you would wake me up at the crack of dawn to write Roman numerals. Who wants to do that, Grandpa? And I, my favorite weekend memory of you was how you sat by me on the couch one morning and passed me a piece of paper, and then you ran off. I didn't realize it was to distract Grandma while I got everything loaded up into the truck when you stole me for a weekend. That was the best weekend of my life. We hiked and we ran down the icy roads of the cabin and it was memories that I will never forget. And I always remembered how you hated goodbyes because you always said you would see me soon. So I won't say it to you at least, but what I will say is that I will remember you through the people I meet. When it comes to storytelling, I will use your skill and entertainment. And I will always have you in my memories. Just know that the whole in my heart loves you, Grandpa, forever and ever. Thank you. Man, very nice. Thank you very much for sharing those remarks with us and sharing your grandfather with us, too.